Hi everybody, this is Walesa from Alive Refurbished. Today we're gonna be using some pole wrap to give this hutch a complete different look. It's a fun neutral makeover. Stay tuned for today's transformation. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. There are certain finishes that they used to do back in the day that when I see them, I scratch my head. And this is one of them. It's kind of like a green tinted varnish. And you don't need to be an interior designer to realize that the handles that the previous owner had on it do not match the mid-century modern style that this Hodge has. So those handles definitely have to go. I love that base and also those brass feet covers. So I'm gonna make sure that the base and the feet stand out at the end. I wanted to be able to reach underneath it to clean all the spider webs and to get a good access to the base to sand it down and remove the brass feet. So I tipped it on its back. Initially, I tried detaching the base by unscrewing the legs and every other part that was attached to the hodge and see if I could remove it. However, the glue was doing its job. Even try using a chisel and a hammer. I was afraid I was gonna damage the base, so I decided to leave it alone. Good thing I have my surprep sanding system that's gonna help me sand even into those tight corners. Today I'm gonna copy my good friend Sarah from 45 Designs. She's always using the orbital sanding discs on the surf prep. She says that they work better. <laughs> These sanding discs had a little bit of grit left, so I decided I might as well just use it. By the way, if you don't follow my friend Sarah from 45 Designs, you're missing out on a great human and the best Australian accent. Going back to the hutch, this area here on the front corner, it's made with the same oak wood than the base is made with. And I think that staining them both with a very natural color stain will look really, really nice. All I'm using here is a 120 grit sanding sheet to scope sand the piece and make sure that my paint has good adhesion. To brighten this hutch, besides leaving some of those areas without paint and applying a natural color stain, I want to paint it with a neutral color. I always like to mention the basics, make sure that your surface has been sanded and is completely clean. Here I'm just using some water, I'm going to be using the furniture prep cleaner after I do my repairs. Remember those handles that don't go with this modern style that I remove? Whoever add them to the hodge, drill some extra hardware holes so they would fit. The modern bar pulls that I'll be adding are gonna be running vertically, which means that I don't need any of these extra hardware holes. That's why I'm using some wood filler to get rid of them. Since these hardware holes are deep, it would take about 45 minutes for the wood filler to dry before it could be sanded. But I'm gonna let them dry overnight and coming back tomorrow to sand them to smooth. It's a new day and I'm sanding the repairs with 120 grit. And as you know, any sort of sanding creates a little or a lot of dust. I'm just making sure that my piece is completely clean using this Lily Moon paint furniture prep. And then I'm loading my detail finish nasal sprayer from Wagner with the color Beaver Beige from Lily Moon Paint from the Opulent line. It's an all-in-one paint. I found the Opulent line to be thicker than the regular paint. I ended up adding more water than I'm used to, but the self-leveling properties were awesome. The coverage, as you can see, for being a very light color, was pretty awesome as well. I ended up applying a total of three coats, which honestly, for this light color paint without a white primer underneath is not bad at all.
I wanted to compare and see if there was a big difference if I were to apply a white primer underneath and paint over it as far as the coverage goes. So this shelf here got primed and I ended up painting over it. I didn't see that much of a difference, which tells you a lot about the coverage. To add a fun detail, I measured the front drawer and then cut some pole wrap leftover that I had to size. I don't know why, but anytime that I use pole wrap on my pieces, my friends on Instagram are always asking, where did you buy that? What is that? So in case you guys are curious here too, I buy mine at Home Depot and it comes in a roll. As you can tell, it's not cheap. That's why I'm making sure that I use every single inch. What I love about pole wrap is that it adds that visual texture, it's wood, it's bendable most of all. So for anything that's curvy and that you wanna add a little touch to, this is perfect. It can be painted or stained, which is what I'm doing today. The stain I'm using today from Lily Moon Paint has a top coat built in and it dries after 30 minutes. I know that's fast. For contrast, I'm using the same stain color on these sides and the base. I guess early in the video, I forgot to record myself adding this brown masking paper and tape to the base and the legs to make sure that none of the paint got on there. And now it needs to be removed so I can stain it. After the stain that I applied to the pole wrap dried, I grabbed some tight bond quick and thick glue, spread it around the back of it and place one piece at a time. Just a little FYI, when using this glue, you have about five minutes to reposition, but not anything longer than that. As far as the details go, I ended up scrubbing the leg covers with some Brass Keeper's Friend and Triple Zero Steel Wool after they had soaked overnight in that one-to-one -one water and vinegar mixture. And look at that difference, that never gets old. And that is it, no top coat needed on this one. Now we're looking where we started with this hodge and this is how it looks today. I would love to read in the comments, what do you guys think of today's makeup? over for watching i hope that you enjoyed this natural makeover don't forget to like comment and share if you enjoyed today's content and i will see you guys in two weeks